welcome to Maddie's Mental Health Podcast, aiming to spread awareness on mental health by sharing the real life stories of those who've experienced it firsthand. Hello, Sean. Hey, Matt. How are you, buddy? Good, how are you? Good, man. Um, thanks for doing this over the phone. 100%. I, I, hope I uh, hope I don't sound like I'm in an airplane or anything like that. Yeah, hopefully it sounds good. It sounds pretty good from my end. Good. So hopefully it sounds good yeah. for the recording, for the people. But uh, how are you doing, man? Where are you living now? I'm out in Edmonton, Alberta, on the south side part. I know that, like, that means nothing to you, but um, yeah, I'm just uh, selling cars for Ford. Are you? Yeah, 100%. Good for you, man. He's you doing good? He's selling some cars? Uh, yeah, I've done about 31 in three months, so I'm doing all right. That's good. That's awesome, man. Good for you. Thanks. Um, so, uh, I coached you in high school football, so we've known each other for a couple of years now. I've known your brother forever, too, and I met you when I was hanging out with your brother too right but, yeah right but exclusively football is where our roots lie for sure yeah yeah we used to make the drive together all the time oh yeah um so i uh i don't really know your story um you told me a little bit um, yeah at the time but yeah i don't really know i don't really know your story so if you want to jump into it Go right ahead. You want, jump right, you want me to jump right in, huh? Uh, so, I was I was probably about eight or nine years old when I started feeling, you know, uh, not me, I guess. In the sense that um, at one point in time, I was like this happy-go-lucky kid. And, I mean, at that point in my life, I was a very happy-go-lucky kid. My imagination kind of ru- ran my... Uh, ran my life and I kind of just let it let it go um and then eventually those kind of days just kind of stopped coming around and I think what stemmed from that was um my parents ever everlasting fighting and not um not stopping uh the the mental and the physical abuse that uh stemmed from my father himself um, and right. I mean, my mother too, and stuff like that, but, um, not nearly to the extent of my father. Um, and then I guess I'll fast track two years and, and go and say I was 11 years old when I started feeling like, uh, I didn't really want to be in this whole, this whole grand scheme of things. Like I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be living at all. I, I didn't feel a, a point in, in my life. I didn't feel like I had any words. And that it was a kind of a, a scary feeling at 11 years old and, and thinking that kind of stuff. So I spent I spent two weeks in the hospital um, with extensive work with a psychiatrist. I probably spoke with that psychiatrist just about every day. Um, I, then, I then got released from that hospital that day. And I was referred to a psychologist, um, and I started seeing this psychologist probably for four or five years. And I'd probably say that if I didn't start seeing that psychologist, I, I probably wouldn't be living today. Oh, man. Um, so, like I, I was I was that sick, and I just I didn't realize I, I didn't realize like how sick I was. Um, so there was a lot of exercises, there was a regimen, there was, there was everything. Um, but, uh, what really stemmed from my depression too, is the fact that I, I changed schools, uh, mid, uh, midway through my, you know, like my, my puberty, my stages through, through puberty. And that kind of, you know, took its toll on me because I had to restart and restarting for me is, is tough. It's tough for anybody. By, by any stretch of the imagination, but um, for me, it wasn't it wasn't easy. Um, I tried to make do with with what I could, but um, with the fact that I had a low self esteem to begin with, um, 
Yeah. Friends, friends were pretty tough to come by, so I kind of tried to hang on to whatever person kind of gave me the time of day then in that point in time. So um, it was just all the steps. Um, yeah, and just there were days where, you know, like, like growing up then, there were days where like I I didn't wanna I didn't wanna go go to practice I didn't wanna I didn't wanna strum the chords on my guitar and stuff like that I didn't wanna do the things that you know made me happy and like you know made me like um right so yeah I, I don't know it's just like. It's kind of tough, like saying this kind of thing, because like I haven't really spoke about it in a while. But um, I hope, uh, like, there's more to it for sure. But um, it's just um, like, how am I doing? Like, can is it all good? No, so you're far? doing great, man. You're doing great. Um, so that's okay. um, that's really young, man. That must have been hired at 11 years old, and to go to the hospital at that age. Um, and and then go right into therapy after. So the, the psychologist you've seen after that, you said that that probably saved your life. A hundred percent. If uh, if I didn't if I didn't like go see that psychiatrist in the hospital to tell me that I had like PTSD, to tell me that I had you know an anxiety issue plus you know a mild a mild. Uh, strain of uh, depression it was just um, without without that knowledge and without um, that psych like that psychologist and that psychiatrist in that hospital I don't think I'd be here today and if I was I'd be I like if I were still to be here today I would be very miserable and I wouldn't be I wouldn't be the person I am today right. without that right you wouldn't have any idea why you feel the way you feel or felt what you felt that's right. Um, so um, you can only share you share as much as you want to. Um, but so was yeah. the PTSD from stem from abuse? Yeah, the PTSD stems from abuse. Stems from my father having it as well. From you know him coming home from war, torn up from, like, torn up men. Um, Sorry. Stems from that from... as well. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, just keep going. I think you just cut so, out for um, one it second. Stems from, uh, your, you know, it stems from your father having it as well? Yeah, so it stems from him having it as well um, because, you know, he was one person, you know, at one point in time, right. but when he came home, he wasn't the same. Um, so there was that. So, but uh, my parents divorced when I was when I was twelve years old. Um, so I and I I put a lot of that on myself because you know I was I wasn't the easiest kid to handle, and I felt that you know I was tearing my parents' right. marriage apart. But um, I should have never like. Looking back, um, knowing like what I know now about you know how to deal with certain stresses in your life, it wasn't even close to yeah. to my fault whatsoever. And in knowing that, and in knowing that is you know a lot more of a relieving feeling, but in also you know gaining more like life experience, um, seeing where it is now, it was yeah. kind of just like a destined to be thing. They were never necessarily. They were never necessarily happy with yeah. with what where things were going. So my dad ended up moving all the way to Prince Edward Island. And, you know, that's tough too because at 12, 13 years old and your body's growing and you live with three females, it's it's hard to um it's hard to talk about some of that stuff with females because they they don't know what's going on with me and how I think and not having my father around to uh to help me kind of kind of hurt and it kind of well not having your father around in general um for young guys confusing period for yeah young boys yeah 
So, so uh, you guys lived in was um, it Edmonton that you lived in, and then your, your father moved to PEI. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly how it went. And then I said, you know what? I feel that um, I need my dad in this scenario, and um, I'm going to go there. So I ended up moving to Prince Edward Island the next year. And I, like I said before, change is a, a very difficult thing for me. I kind of like to um, stay in a comfortable state, but um, I also, you know, didn't really like where I was at anyway. I was being bullied at school and I was, I didn't have any friends and all that stuff. So I just said, you know what, I'm sick right. of not being happy for me. And I had to, I had to go do that for me. Um, so I did that and I left all my, like all, I left all my family out here in Alberta and, um, that was tough because it was just me and my dad and I didn't necessarily know what to expect when it comes to like rules and what he expected of me and, and all that stuff. Um, and I felt like he was putting way too much on a 15 year old kid. And that really, that really hurt. Um, and it really, uh, it really put uh, things into perspective that maybe it wasn't the right move, but um, I don't regret it by any stretch of the imagination because it was, it was the move to make to, uh, to try and have more of a relationship with my father right. than just calling him once a week. Um, because I knew my mom and I were always going to be close. Um, growing up, mom was my best friend, so I'd never had any issues like yeah. you know, reconnecting with my mom um, when I came home. But uh, my dad and I, uh, we never saw you know eye to eye with with certain things in life. Uh, we still don't, but uh, we still love each other just the same. Uh, my dad's my my go to guy for for advice now at this stage of my life, um, and I wouldn't have it any other way at this point. Um, and looking back, I feel that it was justified for him to move all the way to Prince Edward Island when I was when I was that young, because like I didn't necessarily know the circumstances why. But now that I do, it's um, it's more of a justifiable action for him. But I always, you know, I remorsed him for it. I cursed him out for it, and all that stuff. And I was just, um, I just, uh, I just didn't realize, you know, why he did it until until he did it. And then I had to, you know, grow up a little bit first before I could mm -hmm. keep blaming him for, for what he did. Um, and then at, uh, I don't know, I, I, I did one year at Stone Park. I adjusted all right, I guess. It was kind of a different school, the way it operated, the way the classes worked, the way the people were. And I felt like I adjusted okay to that year, but... Um, once I once I got into grade ten, I met um, I met this girl over the summer, and um, it was kind of uh, a, a different thing for me. I didn't I didn't really date anybody until until you know she kind of showed interest in me, and um, she wasn't necessarily all that um, healthy in her mindset either. So it was kind of a very, you know, very toxic relationship in, in that um, we weren't supposed to be together. But the fact that we were sick together kind of built yeah. that attraction, I guess. I don't know, I don't know yeah, if that makes sense or not. But, um, yeah, but it was just like, it was just that. And then... Um, she kind of she kind of mended like her pieces together and i was kind of still on the fence and then when she had her you know enlightenment if you will of you know self healing and and healing herself better she uh she left me and um yeah so i i took that pretty tough because what I thought was love at the time just was just some artificial thing that was just making me artificially happy for, for just yeah. having somebody around. 
So it was it wasn't real by any stretch of the imagination based on like when you're young you think it's so real though. So like Oh, I know, right? It's it's, just, it's not. Yeah. But uh, you you just get the, you just get that sense of awareness like is this like the real deal or is this just a joke? Well, I think we, and you just don't I know think when you're it. young you have like a until um, you kind of kind of a fantasy in your head of what love is and then you kind of paint out whatever relationship, you know, your first real relationship you kind of paint it out to be that. Um but then you kind of realize later that, uh, you know, that a lot of that it was just what you were kind of painting it out to be, and not what it actually is, and what not actually what 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 love is, I guess, or connection. But I mean, it's all just part of growing up and learning when you're yeah. that age. Yeah. Nobody's as old as you right now, <laughs> Matt, on this end of the line. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, man, I, mean, I teach you a lot. I taught you a lot in the football but, uh, too. Yeah, I wish I could. Uh, I could have used some of it now, though. I can't even. I can barely walk, let alone you. friggin' run anymore. My my knee is still really from then bad, man. Like it, it still feels so weak. And I, I do my exercises and all that stuff and whatever, and it just, it's That's not too bad. Same. You got to get an MRI. Like, it's, like, like, like uh, I know. But, uh, like, it actually sucks. Like, I can't do what I used to be able to do, like, on the field, on the court. Like, I'm so limited now that it's... it's yeah, you got to get an MRI, man. Fun. You're young. You'd be able to bounce back. Maybe you need surgery or something. Could be something going on but uh i just i want to touch on a few things that you said um because i think you said a lot there um that was interesting i i think um you you talked about how you're young and i think that's something that we do is we internalize it when we're young um like you said your parents divorce you blamed it on yourself um I think that's super common and um, an unfortunate thing. And you realize when you get older, um, but also uh, you had to make a lot of like life decisions when you were young. I mean, just go on the yeah. hospital when you were 11 and then go into therapy and then make the choice to move across the country with, to your father, um, to move with your father and the unsurety of that. Um that's pretty crazy, man. That's, um, you know, it sounds like you had to grow up pretty fast. Well, the fact of the matter is too, Matt, and I do feel that way. And I, I do thank you for that. I did have to grow up pretty quick. Um, it kind of sucks because, um, I had to, I had to, you know, I missed out on, you know, like the party phase and I don't think I like, I don't think that's missing out on much because alcohol does some pretty weird stuff to you when, when it's in your system. But, um, in that same regard, um, my dad ended up asking me to move out at 17 years old as well when I moved here. So I'm, I'm literally just starting out my, my, my last year of grade 12 and he asked me to move out. The issue with that was, is I ended up having to work a full-time job, play all the sports that I play, live somewhere else, and and try and and try and do everything at the same time. So, I learned a lot from like moving out. It just kind of sucked that he, it sucked that he he didn't necessarily right. want me around yeah. anymore. But at the same time, it wasn't necessarily working because like. I'm a lot like my mother when it comes to, you know, arguing and, you know, just, just, I'm a lot like my mom because she was my best friend and I learned more, more traits and qualities from her that um, he didn't necessarily like. And there are certain things that I don't necessarily like about him at that point in time. And um, so we, we butt heads a lot. We, we did. It was, it was, it got, it got ugly sometimes. 
um, it got scary sometimes and um, it was just it was just a weird experience um, I don't take it back for for anything because like I said every everything that's happened to me before before this um, has turned me into like the the individual I am today and I can't right. uh, I can't stress that enough yeah so uh, was that like scary for you having to move out on your own? Well, it was it was pretty scary because I had to I had to figure out you know where to live uh, and and in what proximity of place I had to live at and you know it was just tough because. I didn't necessarily know anybody that I could move in with until I kind of met some, some, some two fine individual boys who, um, who introduced me to their mother and their mother took me in and I lived with their family and it was kind of just like one big family of seven people in one house. And I lived there for a little bit and they just kind of took me in as their own. Um, so it was kind of, it was kind of um, a blessing in disguise because um, I was just so torn up uh, from getting from being asked to move out and stuff like that. So um, I kind of I thank them uh, for that, and you know, just they kind of saved my life too in that in that regard from right, being well, homeless, I guess. Um. So you lived there for a while and you eventually found your own spot or moved in with some roommates after that? Yeah, I did. And then um, I realized that um, that stuff's not cheap. And um, I was working at uh, Domino's at the time, being a pizza delivery boy, and I was working at Enterprise Rent-A-Car at the airport. And I just, it just wasn't enough for me to, to, for me to afford groceries, my, my new car and all that stuff. So I just, I, I gave my mom a call. I said, mom, look, like I can't, I can't survive out here. Is there any way you can help me out? And she said, you know what, why don't you just pack up your stuff and, and move home? And I said, you know what, I think that's probably my best bet at this point. All right. So, uh. Last last summer, um, last summer I uh, packed up all my stuff. I said my goodbyes to my close friends here in uh, at Prince Edward Island, and um, I drove across Canada again to come home. And um, I'm i'm uh I'm out of my mother's house now I live on my own with with roommates I sell cars and I'm kind of just uh just going with the ebbs and flows of being a twenty year old dude and just having fun That's awesome I guess. and so um did you consider moving home with your mom earlier or were you you just had got started high school here so you were kind of had friends here and everything at the time? Yeah, I was. Yeah, just at the time, I I was in a really good spot. I was I was doing well. Um, you know, I was doing well mentally, for the most part. Um, you know, you get those days where it's just it's just like unbearable to wake up or whatever the case may be. However, however you uh, deal with your your sorrow days and stuff like that. Um. um yeah, I just had like a good a good friend base that I could, you know, be with from time to time when I wasn't working like every day. Um, so and I just didn't feel like working as much as I should be for not making what I wanted to be making either. And so I just said, you know what, it's just time to go home. But to answer your question, no, I really didn't I didn't really think about moving moving back in with my mom at the time because it just wasn't, it just wasn't in the cards. I didn't feel like it was, it was worth my time. Um, so you said you were in a good place uh, mentally. Um, so I imagine this whole time probably would have been a lot of ups and downs. 
Uh, do you want to talk about maybe a little bit? Um, so yeah. you started going to the psychologist at 11. You were there for five years. Did you end up going on any medication? Yeah. Um, to be completely honest with you, Matt, I, I never did. Um, I decided for myself that if I were to, to do that, I just had my own belief system within me that medication shouldn't make you feel better about yourself. You can do it naturally. Right. That's, that's just how I decided it. Um, I was asked by my parents if I wanted to, because they didn't want to just say you are going to take it. They kind of wanted, they, they let me take my, my sickness and kind of run with it. Force it on you. And if I, you know, right. hundred percent. Um, so you, uh, didn't end up taking, um, medication. So was, so that, that five years was probably pretty hard. You went to the psychologist, I imagine. Yeah, that, I was, I was going to that psychologist, uh, twice a week. No, sorry. Twice a month because that's all, that's all Veterans right. Affairs was going to give me. Um, but that's fine. I, I, t I took those days and, and, and did my hour and a half session. Um, and within that, that time frame too, I was in Prince Edward Island. So I was making phone calls, but even the phone call sessions were still considered sessions at that point. So I, I still had to, you know, make sure that Veterans Affairs was okay with me, you know, continuing my process right. and getting, and getting help. Yeah, because I still need it, of course. Yeah. So having said all that, um, um, you know, everybody goes through their ups and downs, and my downsides were were pretty tough. Um, and I, I guess I can touch a bit on some of that stuff too. Um, my downs were were you know I spent I spent probably I don't know. A total of like probably nine months over the last over that last five years from like my eleven to sixteen, I probably spent probably about you know nine months in the hospital right. total um, because I just because I was just you know I was either you know just so off that I didn't want to get out of bed and dad didn't know what like what to do um so he figured maybe a doctor could help us out or whatever and i didn't feel or i didn't feel good about you know anything i did like i just felt like the world was just tumbling down i didn't want to be a part of it and you know thoughts of suicide was was a, a very a very tough like task to overcome and i just didn't know like how i was going to do it and I, I did it with, um, you know, my stress ball and my, my breathing exercises, my music, uh, my running, like I'm still an avid runner for the most part. Um, running kind of, you know, gave me the sense of, you know, tunnel vision where all this, um, this bad stuff going on in my head. If I just kept running and running and running until right. I just, I couldn't run anymore. Kinda, kind of yeah. gave me that sense of like security, like the terminology "running away from your problems," and it, uh, that's kind of what it was. I was running away from my problems, but I was still coming home to the same problems. So it was kind of counterintuitive, but it made me feel really good at the time until the runner's high wore off, and and then I was kind right. of just back in that state again. Um. So. Was there any kind of triggers that you noticed that might set this off or was it, um, was there any triggers, I guess? Um, um, if my dad, um, uh, like there were some things, uh, my dad is what was a very different, uh, talker and there was just certain ways he spoke to me that like irked me or, you know, scared me or the way he kind of 
gave me this like look there was a look to him sometimes and it just kind of put me off and I was just like I was almost scared to be even like right. with him at, at some point in time um but I think um I think just with everything that was going on in my life there wasn't necessarily a certain trigger that could do this 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 and that I think it was just how I was feeling day to day but I think day to day was just every right. day wasn't a very good day Unless, unless I I put forth the effort to try and make it a good day and and not care about right. what's going on. Um. So some of your strategies was running. Um. And you said stress ball. You had a stress ball too, right? Um. Was there anything else that? Yeah. Um. Helped you along the way. Um, organized sports, uh, played a huge role in, in my survival as well. Um, I'm a very, very, very competitive person. I have a very big competitive drive. I hate losing. Um, so with like, I mean, everybody hates losing, but like some days, even if I won, I felt like I lost because I just didn't do what I normally do I didn't perform the way I should have performed or whatever right like that's how much I hated losing is that even if I won I still sometimes felt like I lost and it still sucked right like but um playing baseball football tennis golf soccer badminton whatever it was because I played just about everything I didn't necessarily care what it was I was going to try everything and uh in saying that um in saying that organized sports kind of played a huge role in in my uh in my path to, you know, right. getting healthy mentally. So, um you go through this hard time through your teens. Um and then you have to move out pretty much at the end of those 5 years, right? Um so yeah. Do you want to talk about the journey to health and maybe how you're doing now? Like, say, from that point. Okay, so from that point on, so from, like, 17 and 19, so I guess where I'm at now would probably be the best, the best starting point. So when I moved out here um, – a pipeline construction laborer and um i was working 20 i was working 24 days in a row and getting four days off so towards the end of those days you're just mentally tired you're exhausted your body hurts everything just hurts and you just uh you just don't know when it's gonna end and when it does right. you get those days off and those days off so that's out in, enough. uh close to edmonton that's uh, probably an oil rig job or something and I, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So I was just, uh, I was worn down. I was tired. I called my dad and I said, dad, I don't want to do this anymore. What can I do? He's like, well, you have probably three options here, Sean, and you're probably not going to like two of them. And you may be open to one of them. And I said, well, tell me the two that I don't want to do. He's like, you can either go, uh, one, you can go back to school. Yeah. And I said, screw that. I'm not ready for that. And then yeah. he's like, well, two, then you can find a new job. And I said, there's not really much hiring. And then he's like, well, then you're probably just going to have to stay where you're at because you have bills to pay just like everybody else at this point in your life. And you have to, you have to support yourself financially as an adult so i would suggest you stay at that job until you find a new one and then he said three uh join the join army so you're going to join the okay perfect um so, ba- so um, basically we were just talking about um you uh, you moved out um you moved to edmonton and you, you were working on the oil rigs and it was uh physically and mentally draining you and you called your dad he said you had three options and uh 
go back to school, find another job, or join the army. So that's basically where we were at before we started the new. Corey. Yeah. So um, I um, I started all uh, I started the process in trying to apply for the army, which takes forever, by the way. So if you ever decide to do that math, I uh, I highly disregard it because it's a very frustrating process. Yeah, I, I heard uh, from a lot of people it takes a long time to. Yeah, it's so in saying that, um, in saying that, um, I am still waiting to hear back from a, a medical officer because I had asthma as a, as a young boy growing up. And, um, so having, having asthma kind of prohibits you from doing the, uh, the fitness side of things. So that I had to make sure I had to make sure I didn't have asthma anymore, but, um, on the other side of things is with my extensive, you know, depression and, and, and issues there as well. Um, you can't be a soldier. You can't walk in to be a soldier sick. Um, it was, I was told that as well. So in saying that, and this is probably um, the, the, the coolest part is, is when I went to see a psycho- uh, another psychologist to, uh, to determine whether or not I was still sick. I walked out of that meeting and she said, you know what, like, you now know, like, how to, you know, you now know how to, like, to deal with, like, your, your, your bad days, your low days, and you know how to, you know, try and maintain all of your, your, your mentally good days. And you know how to, like, try and stay on the right track. Like, yes, you're still, you know, to some degree depressed, but, like, you're not you're not um you're not nearly as severe as you once were and you know how to deal with it now so to be honest i just think sean you are uh you're you're cleared i don't think you have ptsd anymore you're not scared of your father you're not you're not obsessed you're not um you're just uh you're just growing up now at this point and i think uh i think you're you're ready to try and take on this new uh, this new life that's awesome. Yeah, so it's been it was it was quite a relieving feeling to like you know hear that and I imagine. to go through um like just to just to hear that and to go through that and to to just be told that like you're not sick anymore is 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 nice. Right. I imagine. Yeah. No. So, like, I guess there's always, like, a good side to everything, and that's probably, like, the best side to my story. Yeah. I like how you use the word sick. Um, I think that's a really good description of it. Sometimes we don't think of it that way. You know? Yeah, I... um... And I learned that from my dad. My dad said, like, I don't... I, I Like, yeah, I have PTSD, and yeah, I have depression, but to just be fair with you, I, I'm just sick and I'm just, I'm just a different way of being sick. Yeah, that's so true. And I, I, I that's, that's always resonated with me and I don't know why, but, um, I, I, I'd, I'd rather just say I'm sick than rather say I'm depressed and it sounds better anyway. So, yeah, well, it, it's what it is, you know, it's just that, uh, it's the society societal thing where we, think of um being sick as a physical thing but um the mental is mentally sick is the same it's the same thing you know yeah 100 percent. i don't disagree at all so you got the news from her and that must have been very relieving well it was well it was relieving because then I know I can actually have a career in the army when when the time comes when they're ready to you know either say you you are fit to be a soldier you report this you report this date at this time um, and all that stuff you know what I mean it, it's just uh, it's it's nice that like I can I can go out and do those things now and and maybe have my own career in the military if that's where I choose to go yeah. That's awesome. Um, so it, 
Do you like selling cars? How did you start selling cars? Is that just the job you found out there? Well, that's that's literally, yeah, that's literally the job I found out here because um, I wanted a job that was going to try and challenge me, not only like you know mentally, but like just to just challenge me in a way that like no other job has like challenged me. And since I'm a very disorganized person. I needed some organization in my life too. And being a car salesman kind of, you know, allows you to, to get organized because you have to follow up with your customers every day. You have to try and, and get sales and you have to, you have to, you know, be, be a go-getter. And, you know, that's been my personality my whole life. And I just, you know, I wasn't living up to it. Right. So I figured, you know what, like, so like, why not, why not go do that? So I applied at 15 different car dealerships. I had four interviews. I took one interview and took the job. I started the next day at 10 a.m. and I've been there ever since. That's awesome, man. And I just, um, at this point in time, I know there's like a honeymoon like phase, but um, like with everything, but like in this instance, I don't feel like there could ever be one because every day, I'm dealing with, you know, a different person with a different personality, with a different mindset, with a different goal in mind for that day that it's, it's so, it's actually just really nice because there are no two different people out there that, that want the same thing. Right. And everybody's got a different, um, you know, mindset and different personality. Like I say, there's, I say there's four, there's four different people in this world there's introverts and extroverts and then there's introverted extroverts and extroverted introverts but within that there's like probably 500 different personalities to go with those four four subgroups right there and in saying that like that's where that's where everybody's different yeah right and since and since i live in such a um you know diverse city um you know with everybody from different backgrounds and different um, viewpoints on life and stuff like that. Like, um, you know, it just, um, it just makes my day and my job uh, different every day. Right. So. That's awesome, man. It sounds like it's engaging and um, challenging in a good way. And also you could probably learn a lot from, all the different people that you meet. Oh yeah. All the different personalities. Uh, I also learned that like you actually do need some pretty good credit to get into a vehicle. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Um, so I guess If you could give any piece of advice to someone that was dealing with similar problems to you or any mental health issue, um, what would some of the coping methods or slash, um, I guess just methods in general you would recommend to, um, to help? Well, I guess I could, I like, in a sense, Matt, um, I don't like being asked that question because in a sense, like what works for me may work for somebody else, but it may not either, right? So like I might be spewing some stuff out, but for me anyway, because I'll still answer the question, what helped me to cope with all this, um, I would say, you know, I wasn't try like I wouldn't um I wouldn't try to make my situation worse than it was. And and what I mean by that is is if there was homework that needed to be done, I did it. Um because then I didn't want teachers barking at me too with all my issues going on too. So like like I took care of my own as as hard as it was to do some of those things like homework and and um you know chores and stuff like that i just did it because because i didn't want to like 
progress like feeling bad I didn't want to get in any more trouble I didn't want to I didn't want to do I didn't want to do any more harm to myself than it was already like harming me I guess um, right. so my guess uh, I guess that was one way I coped another was is if I was ever feeling that way and I and I could do something I just you know I went and did something that would take my mind off literally everything I would just I would just run I, I would I would throw my headphones into my phone. I would turn on something loud and I would just run. And I ran until I couldn't run. And then I ran some more. And then I ran until I couldn't run some more. And then I just, I just kept running. And as much as like, that sounds like Forrest Gump, it, I, it just, it just worked. Right. Yeah. Um, but Honestly, if I could give anybody advice to to cope or to help with their, their mental health is find what works for you and kind of run with it until it doesn't work for you and then find something else. I know that doesn't sound like very good, but you just have to keep picking away at it and don't let it like fester because of it. As soon as it starts festering into you, it, 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 it takes it takes it takes all the control away. And you got to be in the driver's seat of your own life. And if you can't do that, then, then that's, that's where, that's where the trouble starts kicking in. And that's where, that's where the demons start showing up. And that's where it, it just gets like almost unbearable to, to try and, to try and get through what you need to get through. Right. Well, that's uh, extremely wise, man. And um, for your age, you have a lot of uh, you have a lot of life and experience to share. And uh, I just want to say thanks a lot um, for coming on and and doing this. And um, it was good to talk to you and, and and hear what you're doing now, man. Yeah, thanks, Matt. It was it was great to hear from you as well. It was. Uh... Kind of, I, uh, I really appreciate like what you're doing. Um, I, I think there needs to be more people out there advocating for this. Um, it's, um, it's not something people want to talk about, but it's, it's something that's needed to be talked about. And, um, I, um, like if I could give you anything, it'd be like a big old hug right now, but, um, I'm a little, I'm a little far away. So, um, <laughs> I'd give you a big hug too, bro. Oh, I know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right, man. Um, it's always good to talk to you. I wish you all the best. Yeah, you too. If uh, you ever need me to do another segment or something, you hit me up, man. I will for sure. Thanks so much, Tom. All right, Matt. Cheers. Cheers, buddy.